They stepped up their campaign rhetoric in the 2016 presidential race following those brutal terrorist attacks in Brussels. Committed by a so-called sleeper cell for which ISIS has claimed responsibility. So what's America's takeaway from the Belgium attacks and how can officials and those vying for the job of commander-in-chief best protect the American homeland? Let's start the discussion with Representative Marsha Blackburn. Marsha is a Republican of Tennessee. Good to have her with us. She's also vice chair of the House Committee on Energy and Commerce. She joins us from Nashville. Do you feel less safe now, Marsha? Well, I think we all feel less safe, Larry, and it is of tremendous concern to my constituents. And you see it with the American people at large. The number one issue in this election cycle is national security. It's followed by jobs and economic security and the third, retirement security. Now, you want to put a halt to the refugee resettlement program. Yes, I do. It could be safe to say, Marsha, we are a nation of refugees. Why would you stop it? Well, we need to put a halt, just pause it for a while. And there is legislation. I've been joined by about five or six of my House colleagues, H.R. 4218. And what it would do is to suspend the refugee program until Congress passes a resolution that would actually make this a congressional program, put it in statute. It is at At this point, an executive order program. The second thing, CBO needs to tell us what they think this is going to cost. The third thing, we need to have Homeland Security tell us what kind of terrorist or criminal activity refugees have committed in this country. And that is something that is of concern to individuals, especially when you look at the issue around Naeem al-Hamad, who they are saying now entered Belgium by going as a refugee into the program in Greece. And Chairman McCall was notified last fall that some of the extremist groups had said they were going to infiltrate the refugee program. And we've seen the actions take place in San Bernardino. We've seen Paris. Now you have Belgium, uh, the Russian jetliner. So there is a reason to say, hey, let's halt this. Let's do our due diligence and know who is coming into our country and why they're coming here. Are you talking all refugees, including Syrian Christian refugees? I think that right now you halt what is taking place with Syrian refugees until you can vet them. And Larry, here's the difference. If it is some of the persecuted Christians, they are tied to churches and organizations who can vouch for them that they are indeed who they present themselves to be. But when you look at the infiltrating that is taking place from some of the terrorist organizations, we do not know if those individuals are who they claim to be. We do not know if there is any persecution. There is no structure in Syria to call a 1-800 number or go to a website or, or be able to vouch and verify these individuals. So until we can make a determination of how to do that due diligence, we need to halt the program to say, well, the UN says that they have verified them. Well, no, the UN has not verified them because there is no infrastructure in place for that verification to take place. So I think the wise thing to do right now is to halt the program. Now, What I do think we should be doing is working with our allies in the region to put some funds and some effort into the refugee camps and allow people to stay there in their region, closer to their homeland, and to make certain that they are safe. I think that would be the wiser move for us at this point. Ted Cruz says we need to empower American law enforcement to patrol and secure Muslim neighborhoods. Police chief in New York and other areas call that ridiculous. Donald Trump says it makes some sense. What do you think? I I think that what people are speaking to there, and I haven't talked to Mr. Cruz, I haven't seen his comments, but talking with constituents, there are concerns that you have had these enclaves develop where they say, just leave the policing of our area to us. 
and we will establish our own enclave. And successful immigration policy has been built on assimilation, and that is what the American people would like to see a return to is some type of assimilation. I think that would be a wise move. I've worked closely with the Kurdish community that has established itself here in Nashville, and they have worked diligently toward assimilation. You have criticized President Obama for going to that baseball game in Havana during the Brussels attack. What, what did you want him to do? Well, quite frankly, Larry, I think that once they found out there would not be an official welcome for the president, they should have turned that plane around and come back to the United States and said, once you're willing to act in the appropriate manner, as other nations do, we will reschedule this visit, but not until then. And then for Americans to have been injured, for uh, whereabouts of Americans not to be known for our allies and the West, if you will, to be under attack, and for the president to spend 51 seconds referring and addressing uh, the events of the day and then to move on and go to the baseball game with a communist dictator and do the wave. I just felt like it was disrespectful and inappropriate. Are you supporting any one of the Republican candidates? I am going to be fully supportive of whomever is our nominee. It's an outsider year. You're going to see either Trump or Cruz as our nominee. Either of those gentlemen are going to go on to defeat Hillary Clinton. Uh, you've had millions of new voters come into the process. I think that's very healthy for us and really quite healthy for the Republican Party. You and I remember 1980 and Ronald Reagan and, oh, all of the establishment. They were just, you know, all up in arms and it was going to reshape the American political landscape and uh, what it did was to reshape it for the better. And he is going to always be remembered as one of our most successful presidents. It's a good thing. Thank you, Marsha. Thanks so much. Thank you. So good to see you. Thanks, Larry. Bye-bye. Congressman Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee.